I'm Brian and I've been living on board my 30 foot Springer narrowboat for nearly two years and it's got to be said that I'm loving every second. There's been a huge amount of change in my life during that time and even more learning and looking back to the original few days that I spent on board after taking the keys from the previous owner it's almost like looking at a different lifetime. When I consider what my life now involves it's just beyond what I could have ever hoped for. This is truly living my dream. Why do I live on a boat? That is a very good question. Um, it's not one that I think I've got a straight answer to really. I think a lot of it comes down to not just living on a boat, but the lifestyle itself and the outdoors and all of that element of not being stuck in the middle of a town all the time and being able to look out of the windows onto incredible scenery every day and I think a lot of it really comes down to me personally and how I was living my life in the past and how I've wanted it to be lived for the years to come. If you could travel back in time a few years, then you'd find me working full-time hours, then at the end of the day, not really wanting to get up to much or do much. And as anybody who works full-time will know, somehow over the week, you find yourself on your days off having an awful lot of normal daily life tasks to get sorted. And it was at the end of those days that I was thinking, what on earth am I doing? Where's all this free time that I want to do the things that I want to do in life? I just thought in my early 20s, am I going to be doing this for the next 45 years? Or am I going to have more time in the future to do the things that I want to do while I'm still young and able to get out there and fully make the most of it? And I think that thought really haunted me and it still does to some extent. To find all this free time that I wanted so much, I realised that I would have to get around the money issue. And there were two ways that was going to happen, either by winning the lottery or by finding a very low-cost way of life. After a friend, as a joke, suggested that I could live on a narrowboat, I started to look into the idea and realised that I could really try and make a go of living an extremely low-cost life as well as living, as I say, in places like this. The cost of living on a boat can vary wildly, and for some people it is far more expensive than others, depending on how you wish to live your life and what luxuries you wish to have, whether you want to spend all the year round in a marina or go out travelling. And for me, I've gone on the extreme low end of the scale, and I've got a very small boat at only 30 foot which helps keep costs that are measured on a per foot basis down so that's things like the boat license and mooring fees and then just the fact that it's such a small space to keep warm over the winter means that I have to burn far less fuel to keep it nice and toasty throughout and even then a lot of that will be wood that I've collected myself and there's all sorts of little ways that I've managed to really cut down on costs. It's almost less about living on an actual boat than it is about living out here. What's it like to live on a narrowboat? Well, that's a very big question indeed. And first of all, because there can be so much uh, variation in one person's lifestyle on board from week to week, month to month, and even day to day but also because on a case-by-case -case basis the difference from one person living on a boat to the next person living on a boat can be enormous and for example somebody like me who tries to live as low cost a lifestyle and be out here just enjoying places like this and 
just generally getting out and being able to go off on my bike or on the kayak or just walk off down the towpath for hours on end uh, that can be completely different to somebody who may still have a proper full-time job and want to spend all their time in a marina so you've got all the services right next to them which can then if you're on a very big boat as well make it a lot more expensive than the way that I live but also obviously if you're staying in a marina all year round you're not out traveling and seeing things like this or equally there's people who I know who travel hundreds of miles across the country every year and go from all over the place up down left right and again those are all just completely different ways of doing the same thing living on a boat but as for my personal life well let's hop down and have a look this is my humble home, Tilly the Narrowboat, built by Springer in 1987 and giving you this view from the kayak you can see just how much space there is outside and inside. So you've got this huge 10 foot stern on the back and another 5 foot that's under the front cover. So that leaves 15 foot for the indoors and that makes for some pretty close quarters living. On a day like today, it's very easy for me to point a camera around and have everything all lit up by the bright sun outside and you've got nothing but Canada geese in the field as your only visible neighbours and people can draw conclusions and go, wow, yeah, I see what he means about living out here and the peace and quiet of it all and the perfect simple lifestyle with nothing but nature. Or I could show you this exact same spot maybe a couple of weeks ago or even a couple of weeks in the future and it might be pouring down with rain, there's nothing but mud outside the door and ultimately you've got the exact opposite situation where people could look and go flipping heck I can't believe that's just what he does and that's how he lives and has to put up with this as part of his everyday life and it's one of those things that really sums up there's no true way to go this is boat life, this is what it's like for everybody Day-to-day -day narrowboat life for me is, as I've said, all about getting out and just being places like this. We haven't even left the canal yet and already it's a fantastic day just out here travelling down with my friend on the kayak and that's another good day spent in my books. Doing things like this outdoors is just the heart of how I like to live my life and of course being able to walk along towpaths being able to just get a bus out from a different area to some local mountains just over the border into Wales and all those sort of activities as well as the endless biking that I can get up to on and off the canal and obviously just the commutes in and out of work can become their own trips if you really want them but of course there's a lot more to boat life than just playing outdoors there's certain things you have to do just as part of living in a home and that on a boat can include all the usual things of cooking and cleaning and all the rest of it, getting the fire ready and cleaning it out in the mornings. But as well, there's extra things like filling up the water tank and stuff like that. Obviously, you've got things like emptying toilets at various points along the canal to factor into your traveling. As well as, obviously, if you're on a boat, getting out and actually doing some boating. I've already been on my bike into town and bust back out with a load of shopping today. Next job, head down that direction, get ourselves a little bit of water in the bow and then more up just on that corner behind us. Right, the wind's getting up, better get this done. So here's your water point. You've got your magic key that opens up all sorts of stuff like this. And then in here you can see one side there's one attachment, one on the other. And you turn it to whichever side you've got your hose pipe stuck on. As you can see I have to make a little bit of room because eh, over the winter like I say I've got all this wood and coal and stuff under the front cover so I can just reach out through the front doors. But the water just fills straight up into what is effectively the whole of the bow there just hollowed out. I have give it a good line and I think this summer I'll put some rubberized paint on it too. And that is how simple it is to fill up with water. Obviously I'm not always about a five minute boat trip away from a water point.
the white spot you're looking at there is Jupiter. If we fetch the camera down I'll say it's an extremely clear night. All the stars are out and I'll probably have my telescope on the go in a second. But I've just biked down from my friend's house about 10 minutes up the road to return on what is one of the very few really really frosty cold nights of the winter so far. And if we step in here you'll see this is the welcoming site. The fire's gone out long ago so it's very chilly on board and it's just a case now get it relit and then settle in for a nice cosy night. There's plenty of coal inside as well as the aforementioned telescope. Then out through the front as you can see I've got it lit up with a lantern there but just through here we have got all of the wood and kindling that we could want and it's a simple case of reaching through the doors and never having to go outside to get all the fuel that I can possibly fit under there. I have an extremely simple trick to start my fires easily. I just put a piece of a match into a fire lighter so I know exactly where I need to light it. And as simple as that, you can hear the fire start crackling. And then we'll just bundle a little bit more wood in and then add a bit of coal to see us through the night. It's moments like this where I'm sat here now at almost midnight. We've got the fire just getting going and proper crackling that you may hear and the glow of the flames coming through the bottom grill there that to me this is the ultimate relaxation. This is no matter what's gone on throughout the day, I'm now here and it's a simple case of ah. Uh, I can relax, I'm home and the fire's on. It's the therapy almost of the whole process and the whole routine and similarity of drawing the day to a close like this. Whereas to some people I can imagine it's, oh I've had a terrible day, I've just had to bike out and sometimes it'll be raining and terrible weather which is not great at all. And now I've got to be here doing this and fiddling around with the fire and it's freezing cold. Oh, can't be bothered for it. Whereas to me, just the simplicity of it, this is what it's all about. I've got to admit that I do really like the title The Narrowboat Lad that was sort of given to me by general consensus and popular usage where I'd be off walking down the towpath or maybe in town and how you have those passing conversations with people that you don't really know. At some point during the conversation somebody would go, oh yeah I recognise you, you're the narrowboat lad or oh yeah you're that narrowboat lad aren't you? And from there it just grew and I thought I like the sound of that, I'm going to have that one. <laughs> but seeing what it's grown into and there's people, well, tens of thousands of people from around the world tune in to watch these videos a month is just unbelievable and you have all sorts of weird real life things that go on where I mean, there'll be people coming past on either private boats or holiday boats and they'll be like, oh damn, seen your videos and I mean people will stop and then come and have a chat and there's people from America being on and had their photos taken on the stern and it's quite interesting as well that it's so universal. I mean, some people might have an idea that there's a certain age that people who are interested in narrowboats may be, but I can say that from the very young to the rather more mature, I will describe it as, um, it's just, well, it is totally universal and it's fascinating to have these real life recognitions or people interrupting me at work and saying, oh, I love your videos and all that sort of stuff. But there's other things that I think fascinating to go on Facebook and see that maybe I've been tagged in a picture that somebody's drawn or if you're into your games or that sort of thing, then you might be fascinated to know that someone's taken the time to create a Minecraft Tilly, which it's those sort of things that I just think are fantastic little moments from all over society and all over the world. So I'd just like to take a moment in this video to say thank you to everybody for all the support and well, it's just, it means an awful lot and I'll keep trying to deliver stuff that hopefully you'll enjoy. Who is the narrowboat lad? Ultimately, it's just me, Dan Brown, who wears a hat all the time, likes to eat an awful lot of chips and has somehow found himself living on a little boat. Uh, there's some people I think like to think that this is a character that I play up to but it's been long documented for many years how much I love to be outdoors and just doing stuff. 
I'm extremely grateful to have been able to do this from such an early stage of my life. I'm hoping to carry it on for many years to come. And if there's one thing I want to sort of put across in these videos is that if you have the right motivations and the right dreams, then my goodness me, living the dream is more than possible. And in my case, I'm very lucky that my dreams were so achievable. Um, so, and most of my hobbies are so low cost as well that I could manage to wrap it all into one package. As the sun sets on another day, I've got to say it's time to finish this video off. And ultimately, this is what it's all about. I can look around this 15 foot space indoors and know that I've got everything that I've ever wanted. And it might not be a huge amount, it might not be much to offer that other people would be interested in, but for me, this is just about right. <laughs> Thank you.